So welcome everyone to our webinar about SAF 3D printing and manufacturing today. Uh, we're we're going to start with a, a quick overview of what SAF 3D printing is and uh, how, it, uh, how it operates differently than many other types of 3D printing and how that difference can aid in not only quick prototyping, but uh, manufacturing as well. And that's where my, my corny title of how to save millions with SAF comes into play. It, it is a, a method you can use, not necessarily the only method or the best, just like any tool. It has its uh, sweet spot of functionality. SAF stands for Selective Absorption Fusion on the Stratasys H350 printer. This is a little bit different because it lays down a powdered nylon and then it jets a, a high absorption fluid over top to create the shape of the part. Once that part is outlined, then uh, UV light comes over and cures it into that shape. So the powder also becomes its support structure. And that allows you to run lots of parts very, very quickly. You can see in this little video clip, you can lay down rows and rows and rows of parts all being made at the exact same time, which makes it a very, very fast uh, printing process. It's very, very good at parts that are very complex, very ergonomic in shape, lots of interior channels even, maybe not too deep, but some internal channels and things, uh, and parts that are even up to bulky, robust parts. It, it can do all of those really, really well. And because it's a nylon material, anything with a little bit of flex to it a uh, little bit of a, a living hinge will also be able to print well and function off of this printer. So it's got a fairly wide spectrum of parts that it can do. Uh, these materials are the nylon 11, or PA11, PA12, so your nylon materials. The, the PA11 is even made from castor oil, which I just think is really neat. It's more of a sustainable material uh, rather than having to use fossil fuels for it. Uh, nylon 12, uh, a little bit more robust for uh, machinery components. And coming sometime soon, we are told, uh, is polypropylene. Alan, do we have a, a, a clearer idea of when to expect polypropylene yet? Um, I do not know the exact date, but I do know that it's... Uh... It's coming in the next uh, quarter or two. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so coming fairly soon is polypropylene. I, I've been asked by customers if polypropylene is available for 3D printing for more than a decade. So I'm really excited to, to get this material. The process is pretty straightforward. We go from build preparation uh, in GrabCAD print, uh, uh, throw the, the slice software onto the printer, pretty normal from there, and then uh, different tools and components for moving around the, the parts. It's a, a whole printed bed is fairly heavy, so we have a little assistance to, to move those around. And then the, there's the post-cleaning and recovery solution that comes with the printer from Stratasys. But there are also some automated options uh, that Dimension provides. So it's not just all removing the powder by hand, which isn't hard, but it takes a little bit of time. These options are more automated as an option, including part finishing and dyeing, which I think is really cool. So now into the heart of what we're, we're, what we're here for today. Uh, how do we can we save those millions uh, with this type of printing? Uh, for some materials, some parts, 
uh, nylon 11 or nylon 12 or coming soon the polypropylene will be an ideal material uh, for end use parts and because of the way they're printed they're very homogeneous in strength in all directions a lot like an injection molded part so uh, first article quick quick example models uh, not having to worry about the supply chain in getting components you need or, or materials or uh, anything that could be delayed from that supply chain uh, design changes you're not locked into a mold if you find a little error you don't just have to live with it uh, you're not tied into uh, uh, or sorry intellectual property uh, especially if you own the machine in-house you're not sending your designs to someone else and who knows where to get them made and it's effective for low volume manufacturing uh, you can make just one if you need to uh, 